Okay, so um, on my channel, I'm really about um, going back to the basics, the bare minimum, uh, having nothing and making something. And uh, I don't know, people got in a tizzy about getting toilet paper with um, this uh, pandemic and uh, almost a financial collapse that we're going through right now. Um, it didn't make sense to me because uh, we, we've been not needing toilet paper longer than we actually have had it. So you can use uh, towels, you can use leaves, uh, mullen, uh, Ver verbascum thapsis is a plant that's got a furry leaf uh, that you can use. Uh, you could use a sponge. I mean, we, we didn't have disposable diapers until very recently, so people use cloth diapers. So I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know what that's about, but uh, anyhow, uh, I'm gonna, in this video, I'm going to show how to make your own homemade paper. Um, it's not going to be all Charmony soft like actual commercially bought. The way that they, they actually manufacture this and treat this paper or the, the pulp in order to make a roll of toilet paper is quite different and out of the scope of what we can do in the house. However, um, what we can do is turn this into something soft and usable like this. I think this would be good enough, right? Um, again, it ain't going to be charmony soft, so but it will definitely be something useful uh, and not as abrasive and hard as this cardboard. Um, newspaper can be used as well, although the results from used newspaper, and I think it has to do with the ink and whatnot, uh, is not uh, as soft. And what I have here is I have two examples here. This is a, a piece made from the pulp of cardboard and then a piece made from newspaper. And this is really thin. This is a thin piece. Um, it's usable, but it's not. It just, this has more of a texture that's really nice and I guess comfortable and yes I did test this out it's okay um, and then the thicker that you make your pieces the more brittle it becomes okay and again this is newspaper made from the pulp of newspaper and some leaves as you can see you can get kind of artistic with it if you want um, and this is just straight pulp of, uh, of a cardboard so I'm gonna go ahead and show the process for this uh, and um, see if we can get people to start to think and go back to basics and stop worrying about frivolous stuff like items that I don't know anyways no editorials here I'm just gonna go back go we'll get go we'll get into the work of this okay for starters um, what we need to do is we need to shred up uh, our medium our material and I think it's more profound to use card paper versus newspaper but um, and the reason why I say that is because card paper is really hard and you, you're not going to use this to wipe yourself um, if you can try I suppose people have, but um, this is not the best medium, but we're gonna turn this into something that's more usable. Uh, from a primitive standpoint, and hopefully I'll be able to do this, demonstrate this one day, we'd actually take the inner bark from a tree. Now, in the process of making uh, toilet paper in my research, um, they say that uh, uh, soft woods uh, versus harder woods produces different textures of papers. Uh, and so in order, in the process of making toilet paper, they mix both hardwood and softwoods. And there's a chemical uh, inside of uh, wood fibers uh, called uh, lignin that allows the fibers to actually interbind within themselves. And so for toilet paper, if we make it nice and, and charmony soft and make it nice and fluffy, um, they, they, they extract as much of the lignin out as they can. And thus they, they use um, about, um, uh, I might get this wrong, but I think it's 70% uh, softwood, uh, no hardwood, because it has less lignin in it than softwoods, which has more lignin in it. Uh, and so 70-30, so 70% are hardwood, 30% uh, softwood. Uh, and they do a process where they scrape it and make it all soft, and, and there's other processes that they do to make toilet paper, toilet paper. Um, we're not gonna do all that, but what we need to do is we need to shred this down and we will need to boil this, soak it in water, we'll need to boil this and mash it and then uh, turn it into a pulp. And we're gonna use modern tools, we're gonna use a blender to do that, um, that process. So uh, basically just take a cardboard, 
and just cut it down. Now I don't want, this is an old, this is an Amazon box. I don't want this tape, so I just want the straight cardboard pieces. So yeah, just basically take your scissors or whatever cutting tool, just cut this into strips. You would take your newspaper and shred it up if you're gonna use that. Next, we're gonna take our uh, shredded material here and just soak it in water. And um, the previous pieces that I made, uh, they kind of soaked in water for a while. So maybe that had something to do with the texture of it different. Um, I'm not sure. It's not, it's not a, a true uh, scientific experiment uh, for this because I didn't do a control or a test on this. But um, we just want to get this soft. And then we're gonna let this kind of soak in here probably for a half hour, maybe an hour, overnight if you want, um, just to help break down the fibers because this is paper. Uh, that's just a little harder and denser the way that it's made thicker. And we wanna break down the materials, wanna get to those fibers and make a pulp out of this. So we're just gonna let this soak in the water for a while. Cut up this other piece here. So again, you don't want the, the labels and the tape. We, this is a different, this, we don't want this. It's like plastic or something. This won't work. All right, so we want this to just sit and soak for a while, and then we'll be back. Okay, now we're gonna let this boil uh, for about 30 minutes. Um, 30 minutes to an hour. Again, the idea is to break down the fibers. Um, to really kind of have it tear apart. Um, they would, uh, in natural or primitive paper making, I understand you put wood ash in it to help, into the water to help uh, break down the fibers as well. But again, conceptually, this is what we're doing, that's why we're boiling it. Um, you can use grasses, you can use uh, leaves, you can use, again, like I mentioned, the inner, uh, the inner uh, bark of trees, um, papyrus, as you know, was used to make paper. That's where we get the term paper from the Egyptians. Um, the um, Japanese use, uh, they use wara, or they use um, basically rice straw, and they, they break that down. That makes, they give, that makes their uh, high quality washi paper. And uh, so we wanna break, boil this down and break it up. And then we're gonna smash it and pound it and, and grind it up via a blender. Okay, so we have our uh, boiled cardboard here, um, and you know, again, you could boil this for an hour if you'd like to. I only boiled it for 30 minutes. Um, I also have some um, raw uh, aloe glycerin that I uh, just harvested and had uh, to make more hand sanitizer when I run out of the stuff I've already made. And, and or um, baby oil, which is basically just mineral oil with some scent to it. Um, these two things are, are optional. So I'm gonna add the aloe vera because I like the natural stuff. And uh, basically what I'm gonna do is you put your boiled uh, material, uh, which is gonna be the um, cardboard that we have here, in your blender. Or if we didn't have a blender, we'd pound this out. we just pound it. Get a mortar and pestle and just, or a rock and, or a mallet and just, Pound it, pound away. So, I'm gonna pour the water in here. And pour a little bit more water in here as well. Alright, so, what I do here now is I'm gonna add my aloe vera gel glycerin to basically our mash. And I'm gonna measure this out just for those people that need measurements. Um, approximately a, a half a cup of the gel. I'm just gonna add that in there. And that's approximate, not exact. And then I'm gonna cover this up and I wanna puree all this together. Make sure this is down solid. 
turn it on. And let's make sure we don't have any accidents. There we go. Okay, and it's gonna puree. Okay, before we get started, I'm going to introduce this tool. Um, this is basically a wooden decal. Uh, apparently, the screen that you use to get your paper uniform in a shape in that uh, is made out of basically a picture frame with a screen stapled to it. Um, and something else to block out the areas so that they are nice and uniform. Uh, without this, you would basically put your uh, mash, uh, the, the pulp that we just created onto a uh, two uh, towels and use a rolling pin and flatten it out. Flatten it out and then let it dry. Um, that would be a primitive way of doing it. Uh, this here, again, is pretty easy to make. Um, you just go to the uh, crafting store and get a wooden picture frame and staple some a screen to it. There you go, and then get a matching one so that uh, you have the in the, the inner lay here. And then this little kit I got from my daughter some years ago was kind of cool. Um, it's all kinds of little things you can add to make creative looking paper, sparkles and lavender buds and you know, money even, this is currency, yeah. Um, your fabric, you know, glitter. So, um, Anyways, this is, I'll put a link below if this is something you're interested in, or at least to be able to get a kit if you don't want to make your own. So, there it is. But we're going to be using this. We're going to have a little completely primitive this time around. Maybe next time. Alright. So, basically we want to get our pulp. I've got a little tub here, and I put a gallon of water in here. Okay, so I want to take, and I want approximately a cup of of our uh, pulp. That's what it looks like. And I'll just put it in the gallon of water here like this. Okay. I want to smash it or mix it around a little bit. Okay. And probably, yeah, we're going we're gonna to stick with a cup. Maybe I'll do a cup and a half a little bit. Because the more of the pulp you put into your water mixture, the thicker your paper will be. Over time, it'll get thinner and thinner. So you keep have to, having to add mat, mulp, uh, pulp to it. But um, this is uh, basically what we want here. So real simply, you take your deco, all right, and put it together like this with the screen side up. And you kind of, some, some of them have clamps on. Probably use a rubber band, I guess, to be worried about it sliding. And you want to swirl this around. And you kind of want to dip the deco into your uh, mash here and gently pull it out okay and then I'm gonna set this aside let this drain a little bit and then I have these little um, towelettes here these kind of disposable ones uh, that I keep around for these sorts of projects and I can take this top part of the frame off set it aside and then what I want to do is I want to take my mash here and invert it on top of the screen, on top of my towel here for absorbency. And then I want to take another towel and sop up and rub and soak and press down any excess water or moisture out of our fibers that we just added. Like that, okay? Then what we can do then is just peel this off. And then what we have is a very thin sheet of paper here, okay? But it's really wet. This one we're not gonna use. This won't work out. Um, that tells me that I need to add a little bit more pulp to the water here. So that was two and a half cups, I'm gonna add another cup. So it'll be uh, two and a half cups of mash or pulp to uh, a gallon of water. 
All right, and we're going to do this process again because we want it a little thicker. This will be too thin. Okay, so adding another cup of our pulp to our water right now. <clears throat> Let's do this process again. Oops, upside down. And we'll swirl it around to get every get all the uh, pulp suspended in the water. And then I just kind of want to dip. And then let this fill up evenly. And then lift straight up. That's a little better. Okay. I'm going to set that aside. Okay. And so as you dip, um, the pulp is going to get less and less. So you have to add more pulp to keep the same consistency uh, of your end product, same uh, thickness. Okay. <clears throat> so, again, put down another towelette here. Remove that. And then invert. And then I'm going to take my towel. And then rub it down. frame a bit. Like so and then just lift up and that's a little better piece. The thin spots will be still pretty thin but this is a, well, a better piece to start out with. And we just repeat this process to get however many sheets we need. Um, you can get a bigger picture frame uh, or make a bigger decal and uh, just big enough to fit into this uh, tub or whatever tub if you wanted a eight and a half uh, by 11 sheet of paper you could do that um, but again just to demonstrate this process on actually how you make paper uh, again the toilet paper process is making toilet paper itself all charmony soft um, it goes through a whole nother process where they scrape it and kind of lift up the fibers and they, you know, it, 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 they, they've got it down to a pretty much a science, but basically taking cardboard, something really hard and dense and turning it into something soft and wipeable and absorbent, this will work in a pinch. Okay, so I'm going to give you a caveat. Um, if you're going to use newspaper as your medium, um, just know that the ink will stain your plastics and other utensils. Um, should have been more mindful of that. I was aware of the ink, but I didn't realize it was going to be that bad. Yeah, no, the, this the ink is terrible. Um, especially your plastic, it gets into the pores and it totally stains it. So use um, utensils that you don't mind um, getting dirty. So I need to make sure you know that before you try this at home if you choose to do so. All right, so we have a few sheets um, that we're gonna try to dry here. Normally, you would set these out in the sun, you know, hang these out in the sun, and they would, um, you know, air dry or sun dry. Um, but we're gonna speed up that process a little bit using a modern technology. So we have an iron and ironing board here. I don't have the steam setting on. I'm gonna take another one of my towelettes here, and I kinda wanna just help the process along by, uh, just kind of ironing out some of the moisture that's in our sheet of potential paper here. Okay. And I want to do that with all of these. Oops, that, sometimes that happens. Just straighten it out. There we go. So. That's uh, one step closer to a finished product, okay? And then I'm just gonna go through each one of these and iron them out to get the excess moisture out. Then we'll have one more step. So next, using modern technology to speed the process along, is we're gonna use a uh, blow dryer to help dry the paper here. And uh, um, yeah, again, you just sun dry this. I'm gonna have this on hot and low heat. And I just 
I just want to just dry out the paper there. Usually it takes about five to ten minutes. Okay, after a little bit of drying here, you can almost you can already start to uh, see it's turning a different color around the edges and I can slowly and gently peel this from our towelette here and now we just have a, a wet sheet of paper here that we're just going to continue the drying process when you're using your blow dryer come straight down on it otherwise you'll blow it all over the place okay once you've got it dry pretty much it's a little wet on this side but this is turning out to be our, our paper here. All right. It's nice, it's a little soft, I mean, it's a little bit rough, it's, but it's not cardboard, okay? Like I said, I didn't promise that this is gonna be Charmini soft, but it will be enough to do what you need to do with it, um, whether it be write letters or clean yourself. So, just gonna a little bit more on this side here. Okay, so I think this is the first sheet that we dipped and it's really thin. Um, you, can actually, you can see through it. And I'm just drying it out a little bit. And the problem with making them too thin, if they're too thick, it should not be usable for cleaning yourself. Um, you can write on it and do all kinds of other things with it. Make paper airplanes, I suppose you can make masks out of them too. But um, this might be too thin for our purposes to even peel this safely away from the towelette. I have to grab a piece, I have to be very, very gentle to peel this off without ripping or tearing it. So you gotta find that balance between a really uh, thin versus really thick. You gotta be right in the middle. So this peeled off successfully. This is a nice light, uh, fluffy piece of uh, paper here maybe too thin for any sort of use like that. But, um, you know, just something, again, as when you're doing this, it's a caveat. You gotta find that balance between being too thick and too thin. Right in the middle is just right. So I'm gonna go out pretty much and finish um, drying the rest of these. And for the most part, that's the process of making paper from cardboard. Okay, so, um, this is the paper that we made uh, during this video and uh, it's serviceable uh, it's not as soft as uh, the paper that I made the other day uh, this is thinner uh, I can tell the texture is a little bit more um, it's, it's just much more soft right and the difference I will explain the difference where I can tell right is that I did I used the same box use the same materials the thing is, is I didn't get to producing uh, this pulp for this one until I think it was a day and a half, so almost 48 hours, 24 to 48 hours. The water, the 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 cut pieces of um, of cardboard were soaking in the water, so that gave it more time to break down, right? And then I boiled it, and I only really boiled it for like 20 minutes, 10 minutes of that. Um, and it produced a much softer material, okay? This gray stuff here is made from the newspaper. Uh, again, it's just like regular paper, but, um, you know, it might be a little chafy, right? This brown stuff that I let the uh, raw material soak in water for 24 hours at least um, seemed to produce a softer product. The material that we made for this video it's a little crinkly, not as soft like um, the thinner piece, it's a thinner piece in here that we made, the, one of the first pieces. This would be serviceable for this sort of use, um, uh, but um, again, it's not as soft as even this thin piece here. So again, I wanted to take that as a note, and um, I wanted to uh, point that out uh, if you choose to try this project. But again, there's no need to be squabbling and fighting over this, all right? Um, human beings have been um, 
wiping their butts for since we fell out of the trees, all right? Um, there's cloth, there's sponges, there's uh, non-poisonous or toxic leaves that you can use. Um, again, if you know the process, you can break down plant material, turn it into a pulp, lay it out flat, smash it down, lay it out flat, let it dry, and you have paper. So, um, please uh, use your heads. We got the internet now, infinite knowledge. It, tons of information out there to learn how to make almost anything you want from the ground up. So enough with this silliness fighting over freaking toilet paper. So at any rate, I hope this video was useful to you. Uh, check out the links below and uh, I hope to be able to revisit this but actually going out and harvesting the actual wild natural materials um, to actually make paper from scratch.